Hello everyone, my name is Melanie Wood and I'm from Speaking Styles and I help people with the art of storytelling to empower, inspire change, not only in their own lives, but in the lives of other people. I also help organizations and small businesses with effective communication to increase results, performance, and overall communication. Thank you for joining us right now. We're looking forward to sharing the art of storytelling on social media with you. My name's Kylie and I'm the founder of Profitability Virtual Assistants based here in Queensland. Now we are a team of seven virtual assistants who help small business owners just like you to scale, survive and thrive in your businesses. Now the way that we do that is through a variety of uh, methods. We can help small business owners with their bookkeeping, with websites, administrative tasks, we can answer their phones and we can also help them with social media. So I'm really looking forward to set, sharing some tips with you today on social media. So I guess the first place we really need to start is why storytelling in the first place? Well, I'd love to share that with everybody. Now, storytelling, it predates writing. It goes back to the caveman days when all we had was images, all we had was verbal communication, our gestures and our expressions. Because the storytelling is fundamental to the way in which we communicate in our day-to-day -day life. Because that's how our business is, that's how we can build our brand, by having that connection, having that empathy with others because we can share stories. It's something that we have done from the beginning of time, it's something that we do every single day. It's something that we naturally do. And if we take movies for instance, movies are stories and it's stories that we can relate to, we can connect to because we can see how the characters and the actors, we can see inside that story, we can connect with them. So it's something that we do every single day without even thinking about it. Fantastic. And it's so true, when you think about it, when we're young, our parents start telling us stories from the moment we can walk. And that really is what instills our, vo our values and our morals as we grow. So now I want to focus on social media. Why should we be telling our stories on social media? So what I'd like to focus on is actually the words of social media. So think of the word social. Social actually refers to an informal gathering of people who are looking to make a connection. So an informal gathering of people who are looking to make a connection. So when you think about your social media channels, does that statement sort of ring true for you? I know when I think about my social media channels, it definitely rings true for me. So I'm not seeing a lot of really formal words being used or traditional sentence structures or um, really formal grammar being used throughout the posts either. And to be honest with you, I probably wouldn't want to. So if you are responsible for a business Facebook page or a business social media channel, then please don't stress. Your posts don't have to be perfect, your images don't have to be perfect, and your videos certainly don't need to be perfect either. What they would benefit from is taking the key points of our storytelling formula and then just attempting to do a post once a day on your social media channels. Now next I want to look at the word media. So media refers to mass communication. And mass communication allows small business owners like you and me to uh, spread our messages quite quickly throughout our network channels. And when you think about mass communication, I quite often think about television channels. And I actually believe that if we want to become leaders and authorities in our industries, then we need to start thinking more like television stations on our social media platforms. Now to give an example of what I mean by this, if you are an accommodation provider in your local area and I'm coming to stay with you, I want you to get me excited about coming and staying with you and what success looks like once I've used your products and your services. So for example, I could be coming down to the coast and I could be staying with uh, my young family. Now tell me, what is there to do in the area with my young family? Or perhaps if I'm there just for an overnight business trip, you know, what are things that are going to be important to me to come and stay with you if I'm there for an overnight business trip? You know, where's the local takeaway? Uh, where's the place that I can hold a meeting? That type of thing. So again, getting me excited about what it looks like once I've used your products and services as opposed to just what your room rates are or what your rooms look like. So with that, 
the easy way to do it, like I know it probably sounds like a big deal to actually try and act like a television station, but we've got some key story pieces that are really gonna help you uh, come across as a, a television station on your social media channels. And Mel's gonna share some of those pieces with us now. I'd love to. I'd like you to think about this question. When was the last time you went to the movies? When was the last time you rented a movie or watched it on TV? Now I want you to think, have you seen the film Finding Nemo? And if you haven't, that's okay because I'm going to take you on a little journey about Finding Nemo. Now let's take Pixar. Pixar is the genius of storytelling in the movie industry. And here's why. Let's look at Finding Nemo. We have Nemo, this little fish, he's young, he's curious, he wants to know about the world, he wants to know about what's out in the great ocean. Then we have Marlon, his father, and Marlon doesn't like the big ocean. He's fearful of it, and he doesn't want Nemo to go out there. So because of his fear, he actually manifests that onto Nemo, who then escapes out to the big ocean. And then Marlon is then faced with a decision. He has to make a decision to either stay in his comfort zone or he has to go out into the great ocean to find Nemo. Now Marlon has these fears, he has these insecurities and he has some issues around trust of other people. So as he ventures out of his comfort zone, the characters Dory, the turtle and the whale, they all appear in the story. Marlon has to decide, will I trust Dory or will I trust myself? Marlon decides to trust himself and he doesn't get very far. So then he makes another decision to trust Dory and Dory starts to guide him. She starts to lead him on a story and on a journey and he then finds that he can start to overcome some of those trust issues. And then he has the turtle, so he's all these different guides who are being empathetic, they're understanding that he's scared but they want to help him get to Nemo. So he has all these fears inside but he also has a lot of challenges externally that he has to overcome. And he continues to do them throughout the entire story. And we start to connect with the story because storytelling wakes up that part of the brain that we start to connect. And as Marlon's overcoming all those obstacles, internally and externally, they then eventually become trapped inside the whale. And Marlon starts to really have a panic attack. And Dory is there having so much fun. She's there, she's doing backflips, and she's just loving life. And she's thinking, Marlon, you can have your panic attack. I'm over here when you're ready. So Marlon is then faced with that final decision. The final decision to just let go, to trust in what's happening. And when he does that, the whale assists Dory and Marlon out. And then he's able to find Nemo again. And he has this newfound confidence in himself and with all the other people that's been helping him in those guides that have led him to finding Nemo. And Nemo and Marlon have this newfound bond through confidence. And then they're able to share that moment together. So it's their success story that they went through the story, we have been through it with them over those obstacles to eventually getting the success. Let's take a look at how this would look like in your business. So we've got our heroes. They are our clients, our customers, and our prospects. They are Marlon. And they will have a problem. They will have a pain point. So whether it's some insecurities, they've got a fear, or they've got something that they have to overcome. Because their villains can either be internally or externally. So looking at Marlon, Marlon had some internal fears and insecurities and trust issues, but he also had those external challenges and obstacles that he had to overcome. So relating it to your own business is that you become the guide. You're the, you're the dory and the turtle and the whale because you're an authority in the field that you are in in your business. You can have empathy for your clients, your customers and your prospects because you may have had to overcome those challenges and you've got clients that have already overcome those challenges. So you can share that with them. And what we want to do is we want to build those connections and those relationships with them. So 
so it's about asking those questions, being interested about what's going on in their story. Because people care about themselves, the world they live in, and the people around them. So the more that you can build up that connection, the better it will become when it comes to having the products and services that's going to help your clients, your prospects, and your customers. Because you would have worked out exactly what their problems are, what their villains are, you've become empathetic, you're an authority in your field, and you have those weapons, you have those products and services that are going to help them. Because you can share your success stories, you can also share your clients' success stories in order to get that call to action for them to buy your products and services. So that's exactly how the story becomes the same way as it has done for Marlon, that he's overcome his problems and he has been successful the same way in your own business. Now that is really powerful stuff, Melanie. And what we need to do is we need to take these seven key story pieces and we need to continue telling our stories on social media. And when you think about movies, that's really easy to do because movies have a really clear beginning, a middle and an end. And God help anyone who walks in halfway through our movie and wants to know the back history of what we've been watching. You know, why is Marlon in a whale and what the hell's wrong with Dory anyway? You know, that stuff's really annoying when you're watching a movie. But the fact is that when it comes to our social media channels, we just never know when our clients or our potential audience is going to cross our story path. So what we need to do is we need to be continually telling our stories on social media and we need to do it in a way that isn't repetitive and doesn't sound so dory. So one thing I want you to notice is that there are seven key story pieces and there also happens to be seven days of the week. So one tip that you could do is you could pull out a piece of paper, you could write the seven key story pieces across the top of the piece of paper, and then you could start brainstorming ideas that you could talk about on your social media channels that relate to each of those seven key story pieces. So for example, on a Monday, you might wanna talk about your heroes. You might wanna talk about you know, what they look like, what they've bought off you in the last 30 days, what products they're buying, um, what problems they have. You could talk about the problems on a Tuesday perhaps. You could mention what problems they have, um, what problems they're looking to overcome. And when you think about it, as small business owners, it's quite likely that you were once a consumer of your own product. And as you went through your own personal journey, you developed ways and strategies to overcome some of these problems, and now you're in a position where you can share that knowledge with your online community. So be sure to do that. Then maybe on a Wednesday, you wanna talk about the villains. And as Melanie mentioned, the villains are those fears and emotions that we really just don't want to experience. Don't be afraid to talk about those things. Tell your online audience when the villain's expected to strike next, or three top tips of avoiding the villain, or what the villain even looks like if it's been left untreated. And just keep going through each day of the week and brainstorming how you can talk about each of these seven key story pieces. Now, if this brainstorming tactic works for you, then another thing you could try is jumping onto Google or perhaps your own website or even a competitor's website and start looking at topics that are related to your industry. And then you could start aligning those topics with each one of the key story pieces so you know what to talk about on your social media channels. Just one little post a day, one post a day. That's all we're aiming for at this stage. Next, I wanna go back to my reference about being a television station. So if you look at the way that television stations run their programming, you'll discover that it's about 80% of their programming is shows and educational content, and 20% of their programming is advertising. So as business owners, we wanna replicate that exact same type of programming on our social media channels. So we wanna be sharing 80% of value and information that is going to assist our clients and our potential clients and only advertise 20% of that time. And if you think about the last social gathering you attended, when you were there, could you imagine if somebody just, a random person just walked up to you and said, do you want to buy a watch? You'd be like, uh, okay, hi. And then what if they came back at you, you know, in an hour later and said, do you want to buy a watch? You'd be like, oh no, sorry, I don't know you. I really don't want to buy whatever you're selling. 
So we don't want to be that creep at the party that's always trying to sell our stuff. When we're at a social gathering, we like to connect with people who show an interest in us and show that they've got some common ground with us. We certainly don't want to be hanging out with the creep at the party. So make sure on your social media channels that you're acting in exactly the same manner. Another tip I'd like to share with you is when you're posting on multiple social media channels, I strongly recommend that you use a different post on different media, social media channels on the same day. So a lot of small business owners are looking to save time wherever they can. So what they do is they will create a post and they'll post it on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, they'll put it everywhere they can because yay, they've created a post and they're gonna get it out there. But I want you to think about this. What if someone goes to their social media channel, let's say they go to Facebook and they see that post, that's great. They've seen the post and they could potentially be interested in the products. Then that same person goes across to their Instagram channel and they see the exact same post again. Unfortunately in that situation, it doesn't really deepen the relationship between the business owner and the consumer. Instead, what I recommend is post, put your post out on Facebook and then perhaps put that same post on Facebook perhaps a week later. And on that same day, share a different post on Instagram. So what that then allows is the consumer sees the post on Facebook, goes across to their Instagram channel, and then they see a different post, which could deepen the connection with the business. And it could be the tipping point that makes them pick up the phone and call you for your products and services. Now my final tip, if you want some serious bang for your buck on social media, then you need to be doing videos. So Facebook themselves are trying to become more like a television station. So over the last 12 to 18 months, Facebook's been working really hard to secure programs that we're only ever going to see on Facebook. What they're doing um, in preparation for that is they're ensuring that their community is getting used to consuming video content and as much video content as we can. So in turn, Facebook are helping small business owners by giving them more reach and more bang for their buck and more juice with their posts if they share video content. Now, Facebook Lives are definitely getting the most reachable and then pre-recorded videos. Okay, so I put the challenge to you. Why don't you create a post and then create a video on that topic and then a text and image post as well. Put them both out on your Facebook for Business page and see which one gets more reach and more engagement. I guarantee you it's going to be the video. If you have loved what you have heard here today, we have some exciting news. We are having a closed Facebook group so while you're on Facebook now, we're going to post a link on this page to the art of storytelling on social media for Rockhampton. This is going to be a safe space. We are going to share some strategies, some steps for you to be able to learn more around the confidence communication, as well as the storytelling on social media. So myself and Kylie are going to take you through that for 30 days. So we're having 30 tips for 30 days and we are super excited to get on this link because it is something not to be missed. Absolutely, and they're going, you're going to learn some really cool strategies that you're going to be able to put in place straight away. This stuff is step by step, button by button, laid out for you so you can confidently communicate your story on social media. We look forward to seeing you there.